Big news, Adobe's just dropped a huge update to Photoshop and it's called Photoshop 2020. Now I'm covering all these features in detail. I've got a ton of videos I'll give you a link to underneath. But right now, I'm gonna show you my six favorite new features inside of Photoshop 2020. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today Adobe's done a major update to Photoshop 2020 and I've got you covered. I've got a ton of different tutorials where we're going to go in depth into each of these different features and also I've got a Photoshop 2020 learning center on PhotoshopCafe.com where I've got written steps as well as links to all the different resources that I've created so you can get up to speed on Photoshop 2020 really quickly here at Photoshop Cafe. So I'm going to show you right now my favorite six features plus the bonus at the end. And to update, you just simply go up to your Creative Cloud, you're going to launch it, you're going to go to Photoshop, and you're going to click on Update. Now, if you don't see the update, just click up here on the updates, and this will update everything for you. So the first new feature we're looking at is that miracle selection tool that we've all been wanting ever since we've been using Photoshop, and it's now called Object Selection. So what this enables us to do is to select different parts of a photograph very quickly that we can extract them or we can colorize them or do different things with them. So if we go under here, you're going to see where your quick selection normally is now has object selection on the top. This has two different modes, lasso and rectangle. Why don't we start with the rectangle mode? All right, so I'm just going to make a rectangular selection around here. I want to select this flower crown. And Photoshop's going to make that selection just like that, almost like magic. And if I want to add the other rows, just hold down the shift key, draw a little selection around it. And it uses the same technology it uses for select subject, but it's looking at areas inside of a photograph. And we can also go in here and we can use the lasso tool. So say maybe it selected a little much. If we use the alt or the option key, we can choose the area we want to take away from the selection. Or if we want to add to the selection, we can hit the shift key and we could add something else to the selection, such as this area here. And see how nice and easy that works. Now we could also, you know, if we wanted to select the mouth, I'm not holding any modifiers, we're just going to use a selection to select a different part, or maybe you want to select the face. All you do is just make a selection, tell Photoshop what it is that you want to select. So I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about how much time this is going to save me in the future. Let's look at the second new feature now, which is the Enhanced Warp Tool. So if we go in here, this would be good to give us an example. And by the way, I've created a more in-depth example of this, which I will link where you can take a dinosaur and change the shape of its face and make it look more ferocious. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select this. But before I do, I want to extend the size. I'm just going to grab my Crop Tool and just drag a little bit on the front here just to make the document a little bit bigger. Great. Now this is just on a layer. So what I'm going to do is so I'm just going to grab our object selection tool or any of these in here will enable us to go up and choose select subject. Now select subject has a new algorithm in Photoshop 2020 and now it works much better than it did before. And we can see here it selected this car. So I'm going to hit control T for free transform. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose warp. And we've always kind of had warp there, you know, where we can just kind of warp things around a little bit. Let me not do it like that. But this is what's new, is if I hold down the Alt or the Option key, I can go in and I can split this wherever I want. Or if I go near a horizontal line, it will give me a vertical only. If I go near a vertical line, it'll give me a horizontal only. So why don't I split this into a couple of different places here, just holding Alt or Option. And now I can just go there and then it enables you to move it one at a time. Or you can hold down the shift key, drag a selection around to select the different points. So now we can select multiple points and I could just drag this out and give ourselves a nice stretch sports car. Now, once again, check out the other tutorial where I go much more depth in this, where we work with the dinosaur and do different things. So the third new feature we're gonna look at right now is content aware fill. Now, Content Aware Fill is not new in Photoshop, but it's definitely been improved a lot in this version, and also there's a new feature that I want to share with you. 
So let's have a look just to see how well it works. First thing I'm going to do is just choose select subject. And I'm just going to use our object selection just to make sure I can add to that. I'm just going to hit the shift key and make sure we get all our hair over here. And also the bottom of her shoe. So we can use this to refine the selections that Photoshop does for us. And we're just going to choose select, modify, expand. And I'm going to expand this by 15. Just so we've got lots of space here to use the content aware. Now, if I use the shift backspace, this will invoke content aware fill. And I can just change it here to content aware and click OK. So this is just the basic operation showing you how it works. And you can see this works so much better than it used to. Now, let me just go back here. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to undo this and I'm going to show you some new features. So if we go edit content aware fill down here. Let's look, there's three different modes. There's the auto mode. Now, in the past, it always worked here in rectangle mode. And essentially what it did is it just made a rectangular selection. Auto mode, what it does is it looks around and automatically selects areas. And in this case, it sees everything that it can use to um, fill it in. And this is the result we're going to get. Now, notice there was a little bit missed there from the shadow. We can always add this and just choose to hit the shift key here to select this. And I'm just going to grab that shadow there. I'm going to add that to the area that we're getting rid of. Notice how it cleans it up there. And there's another shadow there. Why don't I just grab that and we can add that in there. Now, here's the new mode and this is custom. So with custom, basically what happens is it's the inverse of auto. Now we can grab the brush tool. It starts with a blank slate and now we can just paint in the areas that we want to use. So say, for example, I just selected this. Notice it uses just that area. And of course, it's not looking very realistic because we didn't pick up any of the darker panels. So let's add a darker panel in there and it will intelligently see how it should blend those. And also we need those seams. We need to include some seams so we can use those in the selection and see how those tiles are starting to look a lot better. So by using that, we can determine exactly what it's going to use for making that. So let me just right now, I'm just going to cancel out of here and I'm going to give you a better example so you can see how that works. So here we've got this shape. If I make a selection around here and then I go into edit content aware, as you can probably imagine, it's using all this area over there and that's going to give us a nice blue selection and that's using auto. So if I go into custom, I can demonstrate. So this area right now has nothing. If I just give it a little bit of orange, you'll see now it fills with orange because that's what it has to work with. Let me undo that. Um, you know, and then of course, if I selected a different area down here, it could use that. So one of the things I love to do is to number my written tutorials and I just drag it out here and it's a smart object. And you'll see an example of this when you go to the learning site and see the written part. Now, here's the problem with this. When it's a smart object, if I want to change the number of this, I have to double click into a smart object here and then I can you know, change the number of it by simply clicking on it and then I can change it to two and then I have to save it to update it. And I can go back and it's updated. But the problem with that is it also updates it in the library and any other instance. So what we had to do in the past, if we wanted to get a smart object, we would go in, we would open that smart object, we would grab everything, and then we would drag it back into the document, and then we would be able to work on it like that. Notice it went smaller, and that's because I changed the size of it since I created that smart object. I scaled it before I saved it to the library. So here's what I can do here, is if I go in, and let me just delete this is a quicker way to do this is if I right click and I choose convert to layers. Now it will create those layers right in here without having to do all that. And notice that it's scaled down. So the only thing is when you do a smart object to a layer, if you do a transformation such as scaling it before you save it to the library, that's going to get lost. Everything else comes back. If there's multiple layers, it opens in a layer group. 
If it's just single layer, it's just going to open and rasterize that. So if I want to resize it, just control T, of course, will just enable me to put it back to the size. But here's a nice thing. Now, if I want to make multiple copies of this, I can just option drag them out and I can just change the numbers now just by simply double clicking and I'm working on those layers. So you can see how easy it is to work being able to go into a smart object back to layers. And of course, you just right click, turn it back to a smart object. So you can toggle backwards and forwards, it saves a lot of time. So number five is a big one. Adobe has updated the presets inside of gradients, styles, patterns, and shapes. So not only do we have brand new assets, but there's also new panels for each one and a new way of working in them. Let's have a look. So if we look here, we can see we've got our shapes, gradients, patterns, and styles as different panels now. So if we go under the shapes, we can see that there's a bunch of new shapes have been added. In fact, why don't I grab this group and just drag it out so we can see it better. So if we want to look at the new ones, we can go down the bottom here, hold down the controller command key, and that will open all of these so we can see what we're working with. In fact, why don't we just drag one of these new ones out right now. Let's drag this fun submarine out here and I'm just going to resize it. So we've got different things we can work with. If we look into gradients, we've got a whole ton of new gradients. If I hit the control key, we can click and see all these gradients. So if I wanted to apply a gradient to this, all I need to do is just click. And what's nice is if I want to change it, all I need to do is just click single click in this panel and I can try on these different gradients. It also creates a recently used group so I can go back and try these. And if you look in here, if I hit control command on there, I can collapse them all at once. These are all new gradient sets. And of course, our legacy ones are down there. And you can load all the legacy from any of these by choosing legacy from that menu. Same thing with the patterns. Let's have a look. We've got these new patterns, control click, and we can drag that pattern onto there. And of course, at any time, we can go in and we can just single click and try the different patterns. Same things with the styles. Let's go down here. We've got some new styles. Let's try that. And as you can see, we can click and we can apply these with that single click. Of course, my favorite one here is the leopard skin. <laughs> and of course, once again, all our legacy ones are there, so we can go back to those whenever we want. Number six, Enhance Properties Panel. Now, this is really useful. A lot of the things we used to have to go into different panels for have now been unified into the Properties Panel, and it gives us a lot of functionality. Let's explore some of that. So right now, we've got a flattened document, and we look at the Properties Panel. This is Document Properties. So we could change things if we wanted, like here. Say, for example, if we wanted to make the canvas size different, we could just type it in. You know, we could go to Portrait Mode. We could go to landscape mode again. All of that can be done very quickly, just a single click. We can change the color modes. And of course, we can change our bit depth right there. Then there's things like rulers can turn on and off, grids and guides, all of that useful stuff is there. And a couple that I really like, one of them here is image size is directly there. So we don't have to go up through the menus and um, we can trim crop rotate. All right, great. So let's look if we add some type. So I'm just going to grab my type tool here and I'm just going to call this one type. So if we look at the character panel, you know, we've got all the things that we would normally have, such as changing the size of our type there. You know, we can go and we can change our font. You know, we can change color, all the stuff that you would normally find inside the character panel. And you hit the little ellipsy, all the other options are down here. Same with paragraph, we've got all our paragraph options. So you don't have to open those type panels. It's all here. And then we can even do things like, you know, if we want to rasterize something, we can convert it to a shape. And then that way, rather than rasterizing it, now we've got a shape. So it's a non-destructive path right now. So if we go in here and we drag in another photograph, let me just hit enter to position it. It's coming as a smart object. If we look in the properties panel, we can see all our smart object options are here, such as editing the contents of that smart object, we can embed it if it's a linked one, such as it is there, library linked, and we can even convert to layers. 
So this is useful if, say for example, I just want to rasterize it because right now this is a flattened smart object. So if I just click here, all it's going to do is it's going to rasterize it for me without me having to right click inside the layers panel. And that brings me up to another thing. Now that we're working on this, now it's a pixel layer and we've got pixel layer properties. And of course my favorite ones remove background. So if we just click on there, then what it does is it just cuts it out for us. And of course we can go in here and we can use our object selection to just kind of finish that for us. Why don't we grab our rectangle, hold down the outer option, just go between the legs there and see if we can get rid of the pixels in there. And there we go. We've selected that, fill it with black, control D. Okay. Let's start bringing some different things together. Let's go under the gradients, say, for example, because right now it doesn't look very realistic. But if I go in and I grab, you know, uh, some kind of a gradient and I drag it over the top, let's drag it to the top layer here. Change to color blend mode, bring the opacity all the way down, and now we can start to colorize it. And so we can look at different ones and just kind of try different moods by simply clicking on these gradients and look at how quickly and easily we can colorize these giving different types of looks. And of course, once again, recently used ones, if it was one that we used recently and we like it, such as maybe that one, we can go back to it. All right, let's look at more bonus tips I did say. So why don't I just go in here, I'm just gonna rasterize this, I'm just gonna apply, so I'm just gonna go in here, I'm gonna apply the layer mask. And the reason for that is I wanna transform it. So if I hit Control T or Command T, you see the free transform and Notice as we do it, it scales automatically proportionally. Now this was added in CC 2019. A lot of people didn't like it. How it used to be is it would scale like this and you held down the shift key to constrain it. Now you hold the shift key to distort it and go normal. Well, here's the thing. If you go up here under this chain link icon, which has always been there to keep these two proportional, this now does double duty. If we turn that link off, now the default behavior changes. Now I hold shift key and you go back to how it used to be in Photoshop. If you want to change and get used to the new way, just turn the chain link and now it's constrained shift for non-constrained. I really, really love that one. All right, let's create a new layer, hit the B key for the brush. And under these brushes, I've got this little bat preset that I've grabbed and I can go in here and I can paint these bats. Now I want to do some more, but what if I want to rotate them? And what we had to do is keep dragging on here to rotate it. Now they've finally added a keyboard shortcut, which is the arrow keys. So if I'm using the left or right arrow keys, now I can just change it. And if I want to go the other way, I can. And so now we can change it. And if you also hold down the shift key, it will move much faster. So now we can change the angle of that brush super quickly and easily. Now another feature, is if you want to zoom in on the different layers you've been working on, if you hold down the Alt or the Option key, click on the layer thumbnail, it now zooms to the layer. If we want to look at our woman in an umbrella, Alt click, or you know we want to look at the whole image, just Alt click and that will show the whole image. So as you can see, there's a lot of new features inside of Photoshop 2020. I'm curious though, what's your favorite new feature? Let us know in the comments underneath. So if you're new to Photoshop Cafe and you love Photoshop tutorials, become part of the Cafe crew. Hit the subscribe button right now and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. And anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. Don't forget to tell all your friends about Photoshop Cafe. And until next time, I'll see you at the Cafe.